So it turns out, free speech is actually very expensive. Depending on where you are and what you say, speaking freely could cost you ridicule, <laughs> imprisonment, or even execution. Soldiers have fought and died so that you could have freedom of speech, but believe it or not, there are people in Australia right now who are trying to take it off you. Free? Not anymore. Now, the concept of free speech has a long and troubled history, so let's get a bit of historical perspective. Ignaz Semmelweis, or Iggy as his mates called him, joined the Unpopular People Hall of Fame by challenging the medical wisdom of his day. Iggy believed that new mothers were dying of disease caused by doctors who were cutting up dead people in autopsies and then delivering babies without washing their hands in between. The good doctor Ignaz Semmelweis slashed the mortality rate in his ward by forcing doctors to wash their hands with chlorinated lime. So, did the medical establishment embrace his life-saving idea? Ideas? <laughs> keep dreaming. See, it was the mid-1800s and germs hadn't been invented yet, or discovered, or whatever. And so Iggy couldn't explain why his theory worked, he just knew that it did. Things didn't go well. Iggy soon found himself on the fringe of modern medicine and his career went, um, badly. He ended up working for free at a small hospital in Budapest where he once again slashed the mortality rate. Do you think the others paid attention then? Ha! Of course not. You see, the medical establishment knew that sickness was caused by imbalances in the four humours of the body, which was often treated with a good old-fashioned bloodletting. Um, Feeling better yet? No. The end result? Iggy finally died in an insane asylum after trying desperately and unsuccessfully to get doctors to simply wash their hands properly. He was just 47 years old. So if you've gotten this far without your doctor giving you a life-threatening infection from the dead guy in the other room, then one of the people you should be thanking is a madman from Hungary who died young, whose funeral was attended by only a handful of people, was widely despised, very unpopular, and thought to be ill-tempered, tactless, intolerant, and superlatively offensive. If I had to sum up Semmelweis's sorry existence in one word, it would be loser. Thing is, the loser was right. And the establishment, the experts, the medical scientific consensus, they were all wrong. The historical list of kooks, crazies, losers and nutters who turned out to be right is long and controversial, including people like Semmelweis, Socrates, Galileo, Luther, Wilberforce, Churchill, Bonhoeffer, Mandela, Martin Luther King and many, many more. These are people who each stood up in defiance against their day's conventional wisdom and made the world a better place as a result. Their courageous speech shaped our conventional wisdom today, but to do it, they had to say outrageous things. Things that everybody knew were wrong. Kooky, unscientific, off the wall, the babblings of madmen. Things are better today, right? We wouldn't persecute people like that today. We enjoy the benefits of a free, liberal democracy with free speech and all that, so problem solved, right? Yeah, no. The lesson we should have learned by now is that freedom of speech is vital to progress. We should have learned that free speech means being free to speak your mind as you see fit, using whatever means are available to you without anyone else being able to tell you what to say, how to say it, or where you can say it. The problem is that free speech means that insensitive people can say insensitive things. Sure, I like dogs. You just gotta cook them right. Crazy people can say crazy things. I love lamb. Stupid people can say stupid things. Calling what? Calling what? And Call offensive people can say offensive things. Were you hit by a truck or were you born with that face? This, of course, is upsetting. So the first thing we know about free speech is that it's expensive. And the second thing we know is that it's offensive. But every time we try to make free speech less offensive, we create far more problems than we solve. Take vilification and hate speech laws. The idea is to stop people from saying things that could offend others. In England, for example, a prominent Muslim said that homosexuality was not acceptable and was duly investigated for homophobia, while at the same time a leading gay and lesbian publication said that Islam was homophobic and they were duly investigated for Islamophobia. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. But even when someone does say something genuinely offensive, were you hit by a truck or were you born with that face. Should I really have the power to take him to court and make him shut up? No more comments about his face. Really? Do we really want to give anyone that kind of power over what other people can say? And this is not just a theoretical question. Already in Australia, certain people have been barred from speaking on certain subjects because somebody else didn't like their opinion and dragged them into court. Now, if they dare to express their opinion on those subjects again, they could be found guilty of contempt of court and thrown into jail. It hasn't happened yet, but in Australia, we already have the legal framework for people to go to jail for what they say. A free liberal democracy? Hmm. Not anymore. But it's about to get worse. The recently released Finkelstein report has recommended that a new government-funded news media council be created with the power to force people to publish an apology, correction or retraction or to give someone a right to reply in appropriate cases. Okay, so 
This news media council will have a board of 21 people who will get to decide what is and is not an appropriate case for intervention. Which means in practice that these guys get to decide what we are and are not allowed to say. That's a hell of a lot of power. And given that all of the council's funding is coming from the federal government, and the federal government gets to appoint the head of the council, well, far be it from me to suggest that uh, a politician would be so cynical and self-interested as to stack the news media council to suit their political aims. Pfft, that's never going to happen. The council is supposed to help ensure that the reporting of news and politics, etc., is fair and accurate. Interesting. Fair according to who? You see, accuracy can be tested against empirical facts, but fairness is always a matter of personal opinion. One person's idea of fair is another person's idea of prejudice. So when the News Media Council decides that someone's been unfair, how do we know that it isn't the News Media Council itself that's being unfair? Answer? We don't. And by the way, there's no way to appeal a decision made by the Council. Hmm. News Media Dictators. Interesting. But even if the council is fair, what then? Well then, all the council can do is dogmatically stand up for today's conventional wisdom. Isn't that what fair and balanced really is? Isn't it just another way of saying what most of us were already thinking? So along comes an Ignaz Semmelweis with his chlorinated lime, or a Galileo with a new cosmology, or a, a Churchill warning us that Hitler's going to start a war, or a I told you so. Or a Martin Luther King saying that black people aren't inferior to white people, and really? Can somebody please fire the makeup department? And what is the News Media Council supposed to do? To them, the guy's a kook. He's unscientific, he's offensive, he's not balanced or fair, whatever that is. So the council takes action, shuts the kook up, and goes home to celebrate a job well done. That's it. That's the best this council will ever do. Shut down the fringe dwellers and make sure that we are only ever faced with nice, safe, fair opinions that the council thinks we can handle. I have a question for the author of this report. Given that you and your news media council are human beings just like everyone else, what makes you think that you or they have the power to force another human being to shut up? Are you special? Do you have some gift of knowledge? Are you a modern day prophet, a diviner of truth? Hmm. News media priesthood. It's catchy. John Mills said it best in his book On Liberty. If all mankind minus one were of one opinion, mankind would be no more justified in silencing that one than that one, if he had the power, would be justified in silencing mankind. I agree. But it seems that the Honorable Ray Finkelstein QC does not. Let's have a look at what he says. There is common ground amongst all those who think seriously about the role of the news media. Whoa, 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 hang on a second. We're halfway through one sentence and already there's a problem. What he's saying here is that if you don't wholeheartedly agree with whatever he's about to say next, then clearly you're not a serious thinker. Because all the serious thinkers agree. That's a verbal manipulation worthy of the mother-in-law from hell. Either you agree with me, or clearly I'm smarter than you. This is not about journalistic standards. It's not about media accountability or conflict resolution. It's about arrogance. It's about powerful people here in Australia who believe that they're smarter than you, that their opinion is worth more than your opinion, that their thinking is better than your thinking, and if you think they're wrong, then you should just shut up. Still don't believe me? Well, in reply to the claim that Australians were perfectly capable of making up their own minds on important subjects, the Honourable Ray Finkelstein QC said that often readers were not in a position to make an appropriately informed judgement. Let's break that down for a second. Firstly, he's assuming to know how well informed you are on any given topic. Secondly, he's assuming that you can't or won't seek out more information. And thirdly, he's assuming that he and people like him can fix that by force-feeding you their version of balanced and fair information. Them smart, you dumb. End of story. Wow! What a great argument against democracy. If we're so stupid that we can't be trusted to think for ourselves, then surely we can't be trusted to vote either, or to influence government by protesting or lobbying or speaking our mind. We should just shut up and let the smart people decide everything. Hmm. News media Gestapo. And these guys want power over every newspaper, TV and radio show, news and opinion blog, right down to popular Facebook pages and Twitter feeds. Any website that gets more than 42 hits per day could potentially be in their sites. Even if this doesn't directly affect what you write, it will affect what other people write, and therefore what range of opinions you can read. So what do we do? How do we handle this issue of media and free speech? Well, remember what John Mills said? Mankind would be no more justified in silencing one person than he, if he had the power, would be justified in silencing mankind. I think that's the key. Political correctness, vilification and hate speech laws, news media councils, they've all got to go. Why? Because they all do the same thing. They all put power over what you can and cannot say into the hands of someone else. 
you are held hostage by their sense of fairness or balance or their sensitivity to being offended. We should let each person argue their own point of view and present their own opinions with regard only for their own sense of fairness, their own sense of what is balanced and true and no one else's. Mind you, everyone else is free to argue back. It'll be noisy, a little bit chaotic, and I can't promise that it'll always be nice, but it will be free. It's either that or this. A government-appointed watchdog with the power to force the free press to do its bidding. Anyone with an eye on history knows what happens when a government gets power over the press. And it's not pretty. So the first thing we know about free speech is that it's actually very expensive. The second thing? That it's offensive. But the third thing that we know about free speech is that no matter what the price, it's worth it. I'm standing up for freedom of speech before it's too late, but I need your help. Post this video onto Facebook and Twitter. Pass it on to everyone you can, especially your local politicians. Let them know that if they support this news media council, then you are never going to support them. My name's Topher, and thank you for watching The Forbidden History of Unpopular People, Why Free Speech is Worth the Price.